The digitizing toolbox contains all the tools you need to create your own designs from the simplest, most basic designs to the most complex. Digitizing tools are available in the digitizer level. We've broken this lesson up into multiple videos. We'll cover some of the basics for choosing and using tools in this lesson. Then we'll have a short separate video on each of these first eight tools. You can find lessons in each of the other tools in the digitizing toolbox course. So I'll create a new design, control N, and let's talk about the tools. These first four groups of tools, this one, this one, this one, and this one, work like graphic tools that create wireframe shapes to which we apply stitches. These are your main tools for digitizing embroidery objects. These next two tools can be used to apply textural effects and motif elements. Below that, we have additional tools for manipulating stitch objects. When I select a tool, well, first of all, let's look at the context bar up here. When I select a tool, notice how the context bar changed. I have a reshape tool. I have the fill in the outline tool because this is a closed shape and the object properties docker has opened. If I select a different tool, say the digitize open shape tool, the context bar changes to display what tools are available for this tool and my object properties have changed. Now before we start digitizing any embroidery, let's step back and talk about a few basic concepts and some terminology. We have two kinds of objects in Hatch. We have closed shapes and we have open shapes. Now here we have closed shape. If I zoom in on that, I have a closed filled shape. I have a closed outline shape with a satin, and I have another closed outline shape with a run. Closed objects are what we think of when we hear the word shape. Think of a circle, a square, a triangle, a heart. Basically, any shape that has a continuous outline with no beginning or end point. Closed shapes have an inside and an outside. The inside can be filled. The outside is really just the border. So we can have a closed object with a fill, we can have a closed object with no fill and just an outline. Open shapes are what we think of when we hear the word line. An open object has a start point and an exit point. So although this one looks like it's continuous, if I press H on the keyboard to hit the reshape tool, it's not. I just had both the endpoints lined up close to each other. Here we have a satin line and a run. So one way to think about this is to imagine rubber bands and string. Either one can be shaped in different ways. Rubber bands are closed shapes. They're connected all the way around. They don't have a beginning or an end. They have an inside and an outside. String is the equivalent of an open shape. It has two ends. Even if you overlap the ends or tie it in a knot, it still has a beginning and an end or in embroidery terms, it has an entry point and an exit point. Now, sometimes it can be difficult to tell whether an object is a closed shape or an open shape. These two look the same. If I select this one, go to the Objects tab, this indicates that we have a closed shape. This indicates that we have an open shape. So if I press H on the keyboard to activate the reshape tool, you can see that this has two sides. It has closed ends. It does have an entry and exit point. These are the embroidery entry and exit points. But for all intents and purposes, the object itself has no starter end because it's all continuous all the way around. I'll press Escape. I'll select this one, and you might be able to see that line in the middle. If I press H to activate reshape on this, it is just a line. And it's a satin line. You can see that it has a satin over here. This one is also an outline, and this one is the fill. And notice as I select these different ones, the object properties changes. Now let's talk about what object properties are. Object properties include things like the stitch type, any stitching information such as underlay, pull compensation, stitch angle. Sometimes we have special effects. This one has a special effect on it. This one has an elastic embossed fill. So these are all properties of the object. Now you might be thinking, okay, they're pink. 
pink is down here. So pink is a color and it's not really an object property. Object properties are what we see on the object properties docker. Also notice what happens up here. This one, because it's a closed shape, I can change it to an outline. I can change it back. I'll just undo that. This one is an outline only. So the fill tool is grayed out. So why is this so important? Understanding this basic object anatomy can make editing and digitizing and hatch so much easier because you'll know what stitch properties can be used with each type and why a particular tool may not be available. So whenever you get ready to digitize an object, you need to ask yourself two questions to decide what tool to use. Number one, do I want this to be a fill or an outline? And number two, do I want an open or closed shape? If the answer to number one, do I want a fill or an outline, is a fill, then the answer to number two is going to be a closed shape. If the answer to number one is, do I want a fill or an outline to be an outline, then number two can be either an open shape or a closed shape. So after you've determined those, you'll select your appropriate tool over here just by clicking it. Let's say I want to digitize a closed shape. I want it to be a fill. Maybe I want it to be an embossed fill. And I want to use this color. And now when I create my shape, there it is. I can also change the properties after I've created the object. I can even change this to an outline. Now we can change a closed shape. Remember this is a closed shape to an open one using the knife tool in the edit objects toolbox. And now in hatch three, we can even change open objects to be a closed one. And I can tell you, even though we can do that, it's really better to make the choice before you digitize because some things just work better that way. In the next few videos in this lesson, we'll cover using the first eight tools in the digitizing toolbox that are used for creating open and closed shapes. Then in the next lesson, We'll put some of those tools to use and create a simple design from included artwork.